Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 396 of the MTG Goldfish Podcast. I'm Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and we have the full crew here this week, kicking things off with the owner of MTG Goldfish, Richard. How are you this fine Monday, Richard? Hey Seth, doing well? How are you doing? I am doing super well. Uh, it was a it was a nice weekend here, getting towards the end of summer, and tomorrow early access day, new cards coming out. So I've been brewing decks and getting ready for new standard. I'm just super hyped for uh, Dominator United. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Before we get into all that, we got another co-host in Krim. Good morning, Krim. How are you today? Uh, good morning. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Uh, also, uh, I am also brewing <laughs> with Dominaria standard. So I'm excited for that as well. Yeah, I mean, and that's one of our big topics for today. We're going to be talking the rest of Dominary United. We had a couple days of spoilers last podcast, but we got the full set now. We know what it looks like. As I mentioned before, we got early access tomorrow, so come by the Twitch stream tomorrow afternoon, uh, uh, twitch.tv slash Goldfish, or uh, I think, Krim, you're probably streaming tomorrow night, right, at twitch.tv, the Asian Avenger? Yes. Yes, yes so I am. If you want to see new cards in action, we're going to be doing that. And then we'll have stuff on the YouTube and all that. But for today, we're going to be going over the rest of Dominaria spoilers. I want to talk a little bit about draft. There was like an interesting question someone posed to Mark Rosewater about draft formats getting south quickly, which I thought was interesting. And then, of course, answering your fish mail. So that is the overview for today's cast. Before we get into it, a reminder that today's show is brought to you by Card Conduit, the easiest way to sell your magic cards. And if you're tired of all the hassles that's involved with buy listing your cards card conduit lets you skip them you don't have to type up your stuff you don't got to spend time you don't got to put in all that work with their curated service you can send in as many cards as you want with a buy list value of one dollar or more and pay just a five percent service fee and if you want to put in a bit of effort on your end you can use their sorted service where you list and sort your cards in advance and pay just a two percent fee and no matter which option you choose you get a detailed report with the results in a fast payment once your order is processed and right now, you can even get another 10% off if you head over to cardconduit.com slash mtggoldfish. Card Conduit, they're the easiest way to sell your magic cards. So thank you to Card Conduit for supporting the show. And let's talk some Dominaria United. So we got the full set. We got a bunch of spoilers to talk about. But I got to ask you guys first, now that we've seen the full set, where are we at? Like, did this set meet your expectations? Exceed them? Is it disappointing? Now that we have the full picture, what do you think about Dominaria United? Uh, like for, for standard, strictly speaking, uh, I, I had to like kind of prepare myself for like the obvious, like, uh, dial back on power, but I still feel that this set is oddly kind of just a little, like, I don't know. It's, it's just okay. I don't know. <laughs> I thought, I thought for it being the new big set after rotation, it hit a little bit more, but it just seems okay. Ooh, Krim, you're a uh, you're you're the one that's down on this set at the moment. What do you think, Richard? Well, the set starts with Liliana of the Veil. I'm sold. I'm playing standard. I could actually play paper standard if ah. I wanted to. You know, like oh, this is great. So this will be the greatest standard you've ever seen. For a little start, BGX. Maybe we'll go U G uh, U B X. I don't know. Maybe we'll go Jund Avzan. Yeah, it's, it's all about Golgari based mid range. I think um, there there have been some uh, some boomer Jund lists for standard floating around in the Goldfish Discord yes. over the last few days. I noticed all I noticed us modern those conversations coming back to stand like finally a place. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I, I'm always hyped for new magic sets, but I really like Dominaria. I love the nostalgia of it. I love just like seeing all these old characters. I'm actually super hyped for the legendary theme. I know it feels like a commander thing, and I'm sure it is partly a commander theme, but I'm hyped for all these like cool legends or some cool cards, I think for standard that I'm excited to try. And I think the power level is like, I mean, it's not Eldraine or something, but I think that's a good thing. And to me, this looks like a pretty high powered set that should have a big impact on standard. And I think it's going to do some things in older formats. So I'm fully, I'm super pleased. This is what this and Brothers War were the two sets I've been most hyped about from this year. And I feel like uh, Dominaria, at least, has exceeded my expectations. So I just can't wait to start playing with the cards. There's so many decks I want to build. But let's talk about uh, some of these cards. We get a pretty long spoiler list. So Richard... Why don't you guide us through some spoilers? All right. So first up, Liliana of the Veil. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> Again, <laughs> Karn Silex. Whoa. Okay, a legendary <laughs> artifact at Mythic. 
Three generic mana, it ETBs tapped. Players can't pay life to cast spells or to activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. X tap. Exile Karn Silex, destroy each non-land permanent with mana value X or less, activate only as a sorcery. Ooh, so this one I really wanted on our list today because me and Krim had a little conversation about it in one of our uh, top 10 videos that are going up on the YouTube yeah. this week. I know Krim really likes the idea of this card for modern. I was skeptical, but he started to win me over with uh, with his take on it. Richard, I want to know what you think of this card. Like, Does Karn Silex have potential in modern in uh, in your opinion? Is there a combo I'm not aware of? Is it this like well, I mean, K3 mana close, die on the spot? Like, the, I'm so confused. The, the closest thing, okay, uh, the closest thing to a combo is probably Karn, being able to like get it from your sideboard and then after you activate it, it could get it back from exile and do it again. So it does have some like grindy repeatability with Karn. It does come into play tap though, which that is a is a bit yeah, scary. Uh, you get a wrath with suspend one. Yeah. Do, does the tax hmm. do anything? So you, you can't fetch you can't it shuts Yogg down mod? fetch lands yeah. that's it this is yeah it shuts down the odd combo cycle there's <sighs> street race <laughs> yeah i mean you're just yeah. member. you got to pay full price for i guess something like that but, but it, it doesn't so, stop it, it, yeah. it doesn't stop cascade so no. this is three but mana can tap blow out and die, up is it not like when you just rather play a but you can sweeper? blow up a bunch of stuff i mean i feel right? i i've come around to like I think I would play one of these in my sideboard of my Karn deck. Like, it's a the slowness does scare me a bit, but I think that it's probably good enough to take up a sideboard slot. I like that for zero mana, it gets rid of all the Urza Saga tokens. Although you do gotta like survive until it untaps. <laughs> I guess the big the big concern is there's so much flexible removal. Like, I feel like there's gonna be games where you like snag this with Karn, you play this, and why it's still tapped, it just gets like prismatic ending or Besajute or something. And then you're gonna be a little bit sad. But I still think like I don't know. I think like a slow pernicious deeds that you can fetch from your sideboard. That's got to do something, right? What, what do you think about this one, Krim? I know you're probably the, the highest out of all of us on this card. I mean, yeah, like, I, I just like it, right? With with the, uh, like, you know, us going back to Phyrexia and all that, too. I have to imagine at some point, they, they just seem to keep dancing around the fact that, like, there's something along the lines of Phyrexian mana, right? So I'm not, like, for right now, maybe it's not great in standard, but I think it's going to eventually be good in standard. And then, uh, like, in modern, obviously, yeah, shutting down fetches and things that we've already mentioned there. But, like, I think that over time, if they if we are going back to Phyrexia, there's probably going to be more stuff. I don't know if it's going to be better than, like, Modern Horizons 2 or 3 or whatever. But, like, at least I think that as, as long as we return to Phyrexia in some way, shape, or form, it's going to hate out even more cards as we wait for, like, the new but sets. You can just pay mana. For their Phyrexia, like, like, say you had a Git probe, a literal Git probe, you could just pay mana for it, right? Like, you, you just can't pay the life. But, but that's, but that's all the world's difference, right? Like, like when you think about like how like fast decks try to go off, or at least like kind of like get efficiency on their turns. Like, let's be honest here. What, like, how often have I ever paid for a dismember? I'm not saying that you can't, but I'm just saying that quite often I feel like I've only paid one for a dismember. You spent I feel three like and <laughs> tapped out, yeah, that, and you that's... can't do anything until the next turn. And then, even if you Karn, you can you can't kill things like four mana value, right? Like it's like three mana value less. Like why don't you just play uh oh what's that? What's that thing that kills everything like two CMC or less and then adds mana? Uh, oh, calling dark, calling uh, red, yeah, 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 calling red like that. If you're if you're like trying to do this, right? Like I mean, you can't because you because you can Karn, loop this though. with Karn, yeah. So that the Karn the is Karn thing is from though? the sideboard. If you have a Karn is... and Tron go like and you're pulling from your sideboard, haven't you won? Or do you need to loop the Silex? <laughs> I mean, I think, but so, it's uh, the question is going to be, I think, like, does this beat out something like Ratchet Bomb or Engineered Explosive? Something that's just potentially faster. Yeah. I'm envisioning like Fighting Urza Saga is probably going to be one of the big roles of this. Does this have enough upside with the, like, taxing on Fetchlands, taxing on Yagmoth, taxing on probably some other stuff that we haven't thought of, but not, like, it doesn't hit on a ton, but it hits on some stuff. Is that enough of an upside to make up for the fact that you got to wait a turn before dealing with all the small stuff? Ratchet Bomb, if you got two mana, it gets rid of the, at least the Saga tokens right away. It doesn't get rid of, it's very bad at getting rid of bigger things. And then Explosives, you need a lot of extra mana, so... But the problem is, like, if you play Karn on four and then tutor this out and then play this on five, 
and then wait on until <laughs> turn six. There's no way you're going to be alive in that you scenario unless you're yourself. like ramping into car. And yeah, yeah, that's a that's a lot of turns of not really impacting the board for a format like modern. I do think that Grim's point about standard is a good one, though. First thing I thought when I saw this was. I bet they bring back real Phyrexian mana. I've come around to the idea. I know it's a nine no. on the storm scale. No. I In 2023 magic, I think Wizards is going to convince themselves that they can do Phyrexian mana right. And I think that we're, I'm going to make a bold prediction that we actually see real Phyrexian mana when we go back to Phyrexia. There's just no way we don't, right? Like, and if we don't, then like it's, Almost going to be kind of a letdown, right? They, they I'm not talking about work, completed. Right? If, it, or, if it's they're... actually good, it'll be too good. Otherwise, they make it super safe. And, you know, it's like a 10 drop, which becomes an 8 drop with Phyrexian mana. And it's like a 6-6, six, six, right? Like, it has I... to be so bad that no one plays it. Otherwise, it'll be above the curve good. And everyone will play just like nonstop Phyrexian mana, right? I mean, I think if you always have to pay colored mana... I think Phyrexian mana could work. Like, I think life, that's the biggest... Life? Maybe they made it, like, four life or, like, five life. <sighs> like, even take Dismember. Like, if Dismember, you always had to spend black mana, I think that would be fine if it was, like, black and double Phyrexian. Yeah, that's a good removal spell, but you can't just play it in any deck, which I think is... I think that's where the mechanic got broken. So I think as long as they make sure there is some amount of colored mana in the Phyrexian mana spells, I think they could do it. Like, what, I think it would be okay. standard. Colors mean nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still, at least... I don't know. At least you can't dismember me out of your Merfolk deck or whatever. Like, that was the <laughs> the worst part with they the Phyrexian mana mechanic. Dredge, they're going to do this. Just dredge. <laughs> Storm, dredge. Phyrexian <laughs> mana dredge. 30s. That's what we need. <laughs> For the Magic 30 celebration, and then the, bring the back dredge all the is worst storm mechanics. Cars. This is what we need. Here we go. And, <laughs> and it has Storm and, on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they somehow print a companion that's perfect for that deck. Like, if you have 10 Storm cards yeah, in your deck, yeah. you, you get to yeah, have a companion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, what's next? All right. Speaking of companions, Sarah Paragon, two white white at Mythic, Creature Angel, Flying 3-4. Once during each of your turns, you may play a land from your graveyard or cast a permanent spell with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard. If you do, it gains when this permanent is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, exiled it, and you gain 2 life. Oh, this card's a house. Mega Lurus. This card's a house. <laughs> Mega Lurus. Like, the, yeah, like the, this This card is Mega Lurus, but you get the land, you get to also, oh, you gain some life. Which is exactly what you want for like any kind of angel deck, uh, except for you can't hit it with Coco, but whatever. Um, and, and, and yeah, like I don't know, I, I think this card is absurdly powerful. I mean, I think this is the best standard card in the set. Like, it's hard for me to see how this card cannot be very strong in standard. Like, really? we've seen people play Luris in the main deck. That's that's a yeah. legit thing. This is one more mana, but you also get a lot more flexibility with the the Lurus ability, being able to cast three drops. So I think this card should be very, very good. It doesn't do anything right away unless you play it off curve, which is something we've seen with cards like uh, this in the past. Like, don't run out your tireless tracker on three, wait until four so you can make a land drop. Or don't run out your Lurus on three, wait till four so you can replay a one drop from your graveyard. I think you can do the same thing with this card. So I think at worst, this has got to be an amazing top end to various aggro decks. And remember, like, we got Connive in standard. The, these aggro decks are all about filling their graveyard, just incidentally. Like, their good cards are just looting anyway. So getting your graveyard full with things to get back into play seems like it should be super easy for the decks that would want this. So I was actually wondering if this was good. <laughs> like, Ooh, I was wondering I if people, like, what? see the Lurus and, like, you know, get, get a little crazy here because... Like like Seth said, you don't play it on four, right? If you play it on four, it gets doom bladed. Like you, you're like this is the saddest card you've ever seen, right? So you wait until five, and you need to have a one drop or a land. And if you just play this land and it dies, like that's not especially exciting. So like if you want to get real value, you're waiting till like six maybe, and like this is like that's a lot of mana, right? And you can't loop infinitely. No. Like you, they remove the one thing and it gets exiled. So, like, I th like it can be good, but, like, I don't think it's the same as Lurus, right? Lurus was a three drop. You play it on four and play your one or zero drop, right? And I think we've also, like, gotten used to modern where there's like, a bobble and, it, like, they always have the bobble. And once they have the bobble, it's just, like, free cards every turn. 
like, what are you playing for your one drop here, right? Like, is this really that crazy? In 2022? I'm not even talking about a bobble. I'm talking about, like, this is your top end in a white aggro deck or some kind of white base deck, right? Are you hoping deck, you right? untap it, with this so then you can play a three drop afterwards? Because if, if you do that, then it's amazing, right? But or are you going to hold it to try I, to uh, two spell on one turn? I, I I think I think the thing here is I think we're playing it differently. I'm jamming this into your removal, and I'm jamming three other things prior to this, right, on the turns earlier. And... I'm gonna try to tax your removal. What if I just play the wanderer? and if you put <laughs> well, but the thing here is if you play the wanderer, that that's totally fair, right? Like then you've exiled something else of mine. But I'm gonna be able to like no, no, no. I, what, like, what I, I mean know, is what do... if you play the wanderer for your four drop slot and you can just keep pumping out tokens into the removal, right? Yeah, you you could play both though. I guess that's true. I mean, it's also Wait, I don't worth mentioning. We still got. Giada in standard, so which is a Ooh. very very powerful card. Yeah. So this can potentially be coming down as a four five on turn three. Uh, your graveyard probably isn't going to be super full at that point, but I mean four five flyer on turn three off Giada. Yeah, that seems that seems like a thing. Wait, so you so I mean so if you untap with this right, you can go Sarah Paragon into like extraction specialist into like something else, right? Like you could just like yeah, yeah sure. get your whole board in like one shot, right? So yeah, it'll yeah, be, you can it'll be you can go off for sure. I mean, yeah, get your anointed peacekeeper back, <laughs> and then you get to be annoying with that card. Like, uh, do we oh. have good one drops? Like, I wonder. I think it hinges on the one drops. A one we, drop. So we got hopeful. We got hopeful initiate still, which has been very good even before rotation. But, yeah, but we got the new skeleton in black. So I guess it depends on what <laughs> colors you're going into. Um, the one that can recur but yeah, itself the, already. <laughs> the white one drops are kind of. Are kind of okay at this but i was actually very disappointed because i was super hyped for soldiers in standard and uh we did not get a soldier one drop there's one like zero power tapper thing that's like two mana to tap something but there's just like no tribe members in the one drop slot which is a little scary for a aggro tribe what about the best two drop ever the spirited companion that's a two drop. Well, but keep it's casting a that. Card. Yeah, sack it. Oh, you can cast it once. Oh, child. Once. Yeah, you can only <laughs> cast it once. I get ready for I mean, yeah. so many rollbacks in paper magic when you forget about this thing and you're like, wait a minute, that should have been exiled eight turns ago. <laughs> what a. I mean, this is great in commander, though, right? Like, would you jam. Is this a white staple? Like, with the Sun Titan esque ability, uh, generating virtual card advantage, like, Savine's Reclamation. Is a staple or just like for certain decks in commander? I I think it's certain decks in commander. I feel the need to play this. I, ooh, interesting. Like, I just you play love Sun your Titan, grindy right? white card advantage. This is like backup Sun Titan ish, sort of. I guess, <laughs> but you got to spend mana on the three. Drops. At six mana, it's like three, four flying Sun Titan. But Sun Titan, like you get the trigger and then you get to go ham afterwards if like no one removes it. Right? This one is kind of yeah muted. I mean, for angels, I think you definitely jam this in any angel deck, right? Yeah. That sounds about right, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'm a little higher than you guys on it in Commander, but I I'm planning on trying in a lot of white decks for the immediate future. We'll see if it actually stays in the decks, but in, so, the, in so, the short so, term, I'm so going to I have a question. See. Would you be more upset about this card if the card gained a sticker for when this person <laughs> is put in a graveyard from the back? Like, <laughs> this feels like the perfect sticker card, right? Like, you, you need a counter to put on the card to remember to do the exile thing. But there is no counter, so you just got to somehow remember. Like, is this not a sticker? I I will say it is weird that they didn't have it deal with counters. Because there are some memory issues, right? Like, if yeah. this does stick out and you're, like, playing a bunch of lands from your graveyard or whatever, it's going to be hard to know what is supposed to do to exile and gain you life when it leaves the battlefield. I mean, they could have done it with a counter, though. Put a corpse counter on it or what angel counter or whatever. Whatever random words you want to use that's flavorful, but... It doesn't have to be a sticker, does it? Like, I don't know. Like, just use a counter a like we've done for 30 years. <laughs> Put a sticker, yes. I, I would accept a sticker counter, but not a sticker sticker. Stickers. A sticker counter. A we yes. need, but, uh, <laughs> Who's going to remember how to do... I mean, I think this is, like, Magic Arena, right? Like, who cares about remembering anything? Like, Arena will take care of it. But, uh... Yeah. Rip paper players trying to remember this. <laughs> uh, all right. Next, we have Rith Liberated Primeval. Two red, green, white. So Naya 5 drop, legendary creature, dragon 5-5, five, five, flying ward 2. Other dragons you control have ward 2. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature or planeswalker 
An opponent control is dealt excess damage this turn. Create a 4-4 red dragon creature token with flying. This is all about how easy it is to get excess damage, I think. Like, if you can't get excess damage consistently, I think this is kind of meh. Like, a 5-5 flyer with a bit of protection is fine. I don't think there's enough dragons to really make true dragon tribal work, so I'm imagining this as, like, nigh a mid-range threat, essentially. On the other hand, if you can manipulate the game in a way where you're likely to be able to get excess damage which is a little tricky because it usually requires your opponent like blocking your stuff or them having a planeswalker but if you can this is like upgraded broodmate dragon it's like broodmate for five mana that's bigger and it has a bunch of protection and you can potentially make another token in the future if this is coming along with the four four then this card even by current 2022 standards i think is very strong i just don't know how easy it's going to be to trigger that excess damage thing we've never really seen a excess damage payoff guard like this really take off and be good because it's it's just tricky to manipulate the game in a way to get the excess damage usually yeah i mean like i i don't know is is this is this good enough for five mana am i am i just like kind of like kind of power crept in like when we're thinking about like what's good and what's not because i feel like this doesn't do enough like i i i, I play this this is Five mana, it ha if if I untap with this, there's not even a for sure chance that I even get to pop off with it, right? Like there there's I don't know. I, I do not feel like this card is great in standard. Are, are we are talking about standard, right? I mean yeah. maybe in commander, but like standard, I don't know. This doesn't like when I when I see a five mana dragon, I feel like it, it's gotta have at least haste. Yeah. I, I know that's a lot considering it had flying ward and haste but you know i assume that it would have that for five mana the, and the fact that it doesn't it's significantly worse the, the ward is not it, enough right because they can yeah. still like play like three mana removal or something pay two right so five mana and then void ren doesn't even you care all just like you know you just took a, t a turn off right you didn't get anywhere so i think seth is right you need to trigger that four four i don't know like is there a one mana burn spell in standard that can do this? At two mana, you can definitely do it with burn and like fight spells, right? Or if they start chump blocking, you can do this. But like, yeah. how can you more easily do you this? Got, you got like strangle. There's stuff that deals like three damage to a creature for one mana, but that's still a little situational. I think it's partly metagame dependent too. Like, if there's a bunch of planeswalkers running around, it gets a little easier to just be like, hey, yeah. I'm playing big Naya stuff and I'm going to attack your Liliana or whatever. And then post combat riff, get the 4-4. Four, four. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm skeptical that it's going to actually be easy enough to get the dragon token the first turn. Uh, but if there is a deck that can pull that off or the meta lines up in a way, if you're getting nine flying power and two bodies out of this card, then I think this card is actually very strong. I just I don't know if you can do it in, uh, consistently enough to really make it a standard staple. In Commander, like, I think you jam it in Dragon decks, and it's probably sweet. Also, there's not a great Naya Dragon Commander. We got, like, Old Rith and then Palladium Morse, which is, uh, both of those are pretty bad. So if for some reason you do want to just be, like, straight Naya Dragons instead of five color, it's a fine, it's a fine Dragon Commander, I guess. Like, I don't know, it doesn't super excite me, but it's fine. All right, uh, next up we have Timeless Lotus. Five generic mana, legendary artifact at Mythic. It ETBs tapped, tap to add Wooberg. So one color of each mana. So five mana. So if you, if you want my hot take. Everybody is talking about this card like, oh, with Teferi. And I'm yes. like, no, I don't, I don't want to play this. Like, I feel like. <laughs> I, if, I know. Krim, you it don't just like doesn't doing cool seem things. Good. Oh, it's so it doesn't good. seem good. It's so good. It's so oh. good. I think this card's going to be legit and standard. I think there's going to be a deck that can take advantage of the, the Teferi synergy. That synergy just seems so powerful to me. Like, play Teferi, have it live for one turn, which should be practical. Follow up with this, immediately untap it so your Lotus is free. And then the next turn, you're just, you're going off. You're casting whatever you want to with your, you know, roughly infinite mana thanks to Teferi untapping this. I think there's going to be a deck build around it. We got enough legendary payoffs. We got enough stuff for five colors. We got triomes how good the deck ends up being i guess we'll we'll have to see but i really think someone's gonna figure out a way to to break teferian lotus and standard i like 
you remember how you just said uh, <laughs> a little while back that there's so many like versatile answers and all this other stuff like there's just no way right i mean like they, okay I, i'll gladly eat my words if teferi pops off like i could see that like you know the celestis and teferi that makes sense <laughs> because that's only three mana right like, 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 I'm not even joking. That's like three mana, right? And it gains me life over time. I'm able to like play it in my mid range decks. I'm able to play it in a control deck. I'm able, to, you know what I mean? Like, but like, this is five mana. And if I don't have the other one, I'm like sitting there with like a super clunky, like gilded Lotus that doesn't even tap the turn it comes down. Yeah. But the next turn, Krim, the next turn. <laughs> I'm with Krim okay, here. You're okay, playing okay. like two terrible cards that do nothing by themselves. Whoa, 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 whoa. Teferi is not terrible. It's this card uh, that okay. is not Two great. highly questionable cards. And then if you manage to whoa. combo together, and do it you need a third questionable card that cannot be played otherwise right you need that like 10 drop or something that you're gonna <laughs> cast from this so your deck is just full of like unplayables um i don't know like what what, what are you ramping into seth i'm so confused <laughs> like is aren't there I better mean, ways to ramp if you're trying to ramp meeting of the five how do you how do you beat that um <laughs> Oh God, <laughs> Joda! This casts Joda all by itself, and Joda is pretty pretty good. Oh yeah, I forgot you're like, a five color deck too. Out of <laughs> yeah, here. oh yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think you're just casting a bunch of stuff and dumping your hand. There isn't like one big finisher at this point to ramp into. I guess you can like. I don't know the ten damage burn spell thing that's like ten mana or something like that, but. Uh, I mean, if you have a ton of mana, you're going to find something to do with it, right? Like, even if you don't have some specific <laughs> finisher, like, you're going to cast things. It's going to be sweet. <laughs> I, I like that. Even Seth has a question mark at the end of it. You're going to cast something, I'm right? I'm just play sure, card Silex and hope I posed my opponent somehow. If I'm going to spend mana on an I mean, artifact that does nothing. Hey, <laughs> I, hey, 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 that card is playable. <laughs> I mean, Teferi's doubled in price, so people people are someone's buying into the hype on this card because you're not playing Teferi anyplace else because it's so bad. So is Teferi good? Know, like, like, what? what do you even do with Teferi? Okay, no, no. Teferi's you do not have bad. the timeless Teferi's Lotus. Good. Okay, like like it's Celestis. Yeah. So like, is that no, 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 no joke, no joke. Celestis is like for a while a good amount of the Esper mid. Uh, we're talking standard Esper decks did just straight up play Celestis with Teferi, and then Teferi just gaining you life untapping your your creatures your blockers like your rafine so you can block with it after attacking is good enough tapping things down to get through with an attacker like it's done a fine job it's not like a four of it's not like like hero of dominaria it's just kind of like this little role player card that's like maybe a one or two of i, I think it's, i'm gonna cut it's really from my deck because i might activate wrists on the opponent's side, <laughs> give them excess damage accidentally. So <laughs> I think I'd rather just not go with the fairy. Uh, okay. Uh, next up, we have Weather Light completed. Two mana, five, five, legendary vehicle flying. As long as the Weather Light completed has four or more Phyresis counters on it, it is a Phyrexian creature in addition to its other types. Whenever a creature you control dies, put a Phyresis counter. On it, then draw a card if it has seven or more. If it doesn't, scry one. There's no crew cost, so you can't you can't crew this unless enough things die and it becomes a creature. This oh, this card really intrigues me. This card I think either sees like literally zero play or it's gonna be very strong. I don't think there's any middle ground when it comes to whether like completed. Uh, no crew cost obviously is a is a challenge. There are ways around it. There's like uh, Aster, a legend in the set that gives your stuff crew one, or you can turn it on with a Karn or something. But I think really to me this is something for sacrifice decks. It doesn't seem that unrealistic to get enough counters to make this good. Like at its base, when a creature dies, you describe one, which isn't bad. And then eventually you're gonna get to the point where you're drawing cards with this, and this is gonna be a five five flyer. It reminds me a little bit of Trail of Crumbs. Like, if Trail of Crumbs, a two-mana enchantment that when you sack a food, you can pay one and take a permanent from your top two cards put in your hand. Like, if that's good enough to see play all the way back to, like, Pioneer, I feel like this is, it's got a shot, I think, in those Sacrifice decks. And we even have Sacrifice decks in Standard, like the the Artifact Sacrifice decks with Oni Called Anvil and whatnot. 
So I think there's homes for it. The homes are narrow. You got to be some sort of sack deck. But I think in those decks, we might see whether like completed be pretty good. I... <laughs> and no one said. Griff, you want to break the news to him? Come on, it draws cards. It draws cards. <laughs> Look, I, don't, I mean, I, look, th is there a sack deck where if you sack seven things you haven't won already? Like, is getting a 5-5 five, five flyer, like, what you're trying to do here? Ooh. Okay. I've seen okay. I've seen Cat be sacked seven times before, and I'm still, like, 13 at the end of it. So <laughs> I think <laughs> there are decks where it happens on occasion. <laughs> I, will, I will admit that, like, I think maybe this oh, – actually, no, this card seems way too slow. <laughs> like, I, I, I want I want to justify this card being as good as, like, you know, the, the Maze Mind Tomes and, and all that. But, I, like, legitimately, I would just play Bank Buster. Like, that, yeah. that, that at least draws me cards – uh, it it go. It feels like it could go online a lot faster. Like, do we have a an infinite sack outlet right now, or like a free sack outlet? I mean, and a good recursive thing with it. <laughs> the because... Skeleton. Oh come on! <laughs> like, like that's it, Richard. Stop that! You, you know, like that's not enough. Like, I mean, in in standard, the anvil decks are like pretty consistently sacking their constructs or whatever the tokens are that it makes. Okay, so that's probably the okay. closest in standard. I don't think we have a. There's no Viserys here, a Woe Strider or something. Yeah. just zero mana creature sack my board or whatever. I I don't think we have that unless I've missed it. I think there's a couple of bad ones that cost mana that aren't very good, but that would be my main guess for standard. If there's a chance in standard probably like the rakdos artifact deck yeah like it's gonna take i don't know i, I don't know if it like necessarily uh th this feels like it's kind of slow for that deck but maybe maybe i'm wrong i feel like eventually it'll get a lot easier to like make this thing live but for right now this just feels kind of way too slow I, and for me i think it's the, it's the, also oh, go ahead i was gonna say that i think the best bet is aster no but the thing is, this thing is legendary, so you can't even, like, stack up a bunch of weather lights and then, like, play an Aster and, like, Alpha Strike and finish them off, like. But, like, you <sighs> crew it somehow without sacking seven things, right? And you just hit him <laughs> as a two-mana 5-5 five, five flying, a, a Tarmogoyf, if you will. Ah, I well, mean, we actually have a Tarmogoyf. So <laughs> maybe. I don't know, this might be better than Tarmogoyf. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe maybe vehicle decks. Like, that's another way to look at it. Yeah. Just forget about the sacrifice plan and go in vehicle decks. Because there are, along with Aster, there's also, uh, oh, I can never remember the name of this, a, a vehicle that when you crew it, it crews another vehicle for free. Oh. It just, like, turns it on. Uh, mobilizer mech. Yeah, yeah, mobilizer yeah. mech. Yeah. yeah. So maybe there's something where you play this and you, like, crew the mech and then that crews this and you hit for, like, a million in the air and just wreck people that way. So maybe, maybe five. that could work. <laughs> five man, uh, five damage. Well, so. well, it's legendary, mech is, though. Mech That's what makes it, like, mad, right? Like, you can't even, like, stack these things up. You can't even <laughs> yeah, leap no, them away the to each other or something, right? I mean, Heart, Heart of Kieran? Heart of Kieran's legendary. And that saw like, Yeah, that but was Heart busted. of Kieran was easy that to, was like, turn crew. on and crew, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, like it's true. Like that, that like costed nothing to crew. But it was still a <laughs> so. legend that people played four of, like a legendary two drop vehicle that saw four of play. Yeah, eh? I don't know. I, but it was it was it that was, good, it was good though, right? It was <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were happy you to get two of these. Right? I don't know if I'm happy to get two, but like a few did in my head. Again, oh. like this, this could just be us being power crept into like thinking. But like, I I feel like a lot of these cards is also like. At a level, uh, the same level, re or the reason why I'm like, oh, this set's just okay. You know, like, it's not like, oh, my God, yes, the new fall or the new set is here after standard. It's just cool. Liliana set. <laughs> oh, I think and the just funniest... Liliana, you see. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ah, it, it does. It does. <sighs> You guys are going to see. You'll see. Wait until the cards release. Come by my okay. stream tomorrow. I will show you the brokenness <laughs> Okay, we're going to see Teferi into Tidus Lotus. <laughs> untap Weatherlight Complete. Sack seven things. <laughs> yes. yes. Draw a card. Game. Game. <laughs> draw a card. Yeah, no, we don't even win. We just... That ends with draw a card. <laughs> Which is a win, technically, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, next. Ivy. Gleeful Spell Thief. Blue and a green. So Simic colors. Krim, your favorite. It's a legendary creature, yeah, fairy rogue. What are you gonna do, Krim? Your two favorite creature types in Civic. <laughs> I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted. You see, green gets everything. It's a two-one it. flyer. <laughs> when a player casts a spell that targets only a single creature other than Ivy, you may copy that spell. The copy targets Ivy. So 
I don't know if we have the pieces to really make this work in standard yet. I've been scrounging around and there's just, there's some pump spells, but like the auras that draw a card that you see with like uh, the rune deck, those are all rotating. So there's not a lot to build some sort of like Bogglesy Ivy style deck in standard. However, I'm curious, what do you think about like slightly older formats i don't think it was going to make it a modern but what about like pioneer or historic those formats where you see the the aura style decks like is there any argument for playing this alongside your uh spirit and core spirit dancers and sroms and so forth because it does something like pretty similar like if you have this on the battlefield you cast your aura targeting your other thing you get one on here you draw cards for both of them you build big threats eh. well so the the way that ivy reads I don't know, maybe, maybe like, I, I wouldn't, you know, mark it against me and my inability to read a uh, magic card, but uh, whenever a player casts a spell that targets only a single creature other than Ivy, right? So you have to have Ivy sit there and then all, and then target the other thing. So, like, if there's nothing else, like, they're going to go up removal. And if they're, they're popping every one of your creatures, Ivy just sits there. Well, Ivy would die. That's well, no, it's a man. <laughs> I, 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 you only got a Ivy dies. You only got to copy the right. the beneficial stuff. It's a May. It's a oh, May. Right. May. So you it's don't have May. okay. Yeah, yeah. So you don't okay. have to eat a Doom Blade or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, correct. But the thing here is, it just Ivy sits there, right? So Ivy has to get the value off of something else, and then Ivy also cares that you know, like I like, I don't know that that isn't that a little too situational like i wish ivy did something if she was the only thing on the board i mean it's still a two-one flyer that's that's a thing oh okay how, not, how many not, I mean, those are bad starting pioneer. Sets. Uh, so oh. pioneer is actually probably the weakest because you don't have uh core spirit dancer we have satessa so, champion is that the only yeah you, you got satessa yeah. champion yeah. there's no sethis you got srom if you're Swam. like specifically yeah. in on auras you do. You would have to be three colors. That is like the awkward part. I know what I'm going to do with this card, and I don't know if this is going to be good, but I'm so excited to build this deck. Is it is ridiculous with mutate. Uh, I'm going to bring back the the simic mutate deck because those are actually creature spells that target. So if you mutate, you get to like get token mutate yeah. piles going. Uh, so I think that I don't know the mutate deck's like super fringe, but I do think this improves the mutate deck. Uh, so. I, I like this card. I think it's a it's a cool card. We'll see if it actually makes it in competitive formats, though. Uh, it's a legendary yeah. creature Maybe. again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everything's a legend in this set. I've given up on, like, docking cards for being legendary at this point because everything is legendary. I mean, legendary. it matters, so right? Because you just... you, if you have two Ivy Gleeful Spell Thieves, you can't just play them and then trigger each other, right? Like, you, you yeah. have a legendary, no, that's... and then that's that, right? So I, I think it actually matters in these cases. It does. But, like, I think you have to dock almost every card in every creature in the set like almost every creature in the set's a legend so they all equally suffer from the legend rule issue all right next up run velt horde master one in a red one one goblin warrior at rare other goblins you control get plus one plus one uh when run velt horde master or another goblin you control dies exile the top card of your library if it's a goblin creature card, you may cast that card until the end of your next turn. These lords are <laughs> absurd. I, I, so good. Yeah, like, it, it, I don't know if there's going to be a goblin deck or whatever, but, like, if there is one, this is in it, right? These lords are awesome. The merfolk, the the elf one, all of them are so good. Uh, assuming that, I mean, I, I, I believe it with going back to Ixalan, I believe the merfolk one would. But, like, the goblin one? I don't know where goblins come in, but but once they do, like great. Yeah, and standard the the challenge is going to be the lack of other good goblins. Uh, new squeeze, not bad. Fable makes a, a goblin token, but you don't really have stuff to build a traditional goblin tribal deck. But I think this is staple lord in older formats, like historic goblins, modern goblins legacy goblins maybe uh like the ability is so good plus it's a two mana lord which for goblins in specific makes it unique goblins have some decent lords but they start at three mana so just being two mana is an upside and then if you think about goblins in most formats they're skirk prospecting sacrificing stuff uh the modern one is almost a sack combo deck so the ability apart from just being removal protection is super synergistic with what goblin tribes are already trying to do i think this is the best goblin lord that's ever been printed Worst case, it's the second best between the uh, behind the three mana one that gives everything haste. But this is like, I think this card's so good. Yeah, I I I, I think this is a very good lord. Uh, obviously, the the chieftains and 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 whatnot, the 
siege whatever the one that reduces goblins i think those are just ahead but like you know the this is great at two mana yeah before snoop goblins had like no good two drops i think right mm-hmm. so yeah this was a two drop yeah. that's extremely good it powers up your deck uh does this make modern goblins viable i don't know it still dies to fury <sighs> Uh, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> it's, you still get eight for one or whatever. So yeah, you can just draw some cards back off the top, right? But uh, it does make it interesting. It does make it interesting. It it helps there, right? Like being able to refill your hand if you get Fury helps at least a little bit. I does would it? say your aggro deck. <laughs> you just lost your whole I mean, board. <laughs> I think Goblin's like is more of a more of a combo deck at this point, really. Like it's aggro combo, I think. So if maybe if you embrace the combo aspect more, I don't know. They're playing like Mog Fanatics and stuff. It's pretty funny that you like Mog Fanatic ping a Birds of Paradise draw card. Like <laughs> there's goblins. some sweet synergy. I guess that's true. But it, yeah, like with the Prospector, you can sack and draw cards. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. But I think this is like the best, one of the best cards in the set. Um, yeah. But I, I would agree. It's kind of lacking in all formats. So I don't know if that means much, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe one day we'll get the return of tribal decks and then this card will be like super good. If you, if you think goblins are lacking, just wait till we talk about some of the other tribes that these lords support. All right. Well, I think well, goblins is like the best of the bunch. Uh, <laughs> Vildalian. Okay. Okay. We we are not gonna get into that. You know, Seth and I. We've already had this discussion. <laughs> Vildalian hex. Yeah. You need to. Let's, let's move on to the blue. Thank one, you. Okay. One in a blue. Yes, Richard. Yes. Creature merfolk wizard at rare flash. Other merfolk you control get plus one plus one. Sacrifice a merfolk. Counter target non creature spell unless its controller pays one. Yes, Richard. Thank you <laughs> for na- for talking about the best lord. Is it? <laughs> well, let me. Okay, I'll explain. Okay, actually, I think the elf ones are really good. But like the reason why I think the Vidalian uh, hex. Uh, catcher card is the best lord is because merfolk has had the most success across formats when i say across like i feel like more often than not you always hear about oh dude did you hear about the random merfolk deck that took down x tournament (laughs) and but you never hear oh dude did you hear the random goblin deck that took down the tournament I, I that's like that's they're what, missing I think the card. Merfolk, <laughs> oh, is that what it is? See, like this this card I think actually is real good. It has flash. It's in a tribe that's already, you know, now every creature in a Merfolk deck now will pretty much be a lord. And on top of that, like, dude, this card gives you like a lot of like it turns everything into a curse catcher. Why not? And it pumps on top of that. That's great. In a tribe that has already kind of, like, been keeping, like, most of the older formats honest with, you know, Seas Claim, Spreading Seas, all that other stuff, like, uh, I, I, I think this card is sweet. And then on top of that, we're going back to Ixalan. Assuming that, we're, like, there's going to at least be one to, like, 50 Merfolk will be, like, you know, on that plane. So... The, the, that's got to pop, right? So I think you're living in, in 2010, Grim. <laughs> like, I, I have fond memories of turning on the SCG Legacy Open on a Saturday and no watching way, people merfolk <laughs> against, you know, I don't even know what else was going on in Legacy back then. But I think Goblins is a, a recently a more powerful tribe in essentially every format than yeah. merfolk. Like, I think I would say that the results favor Goblins over the past couple years at least. And, like, a decade ago, merfolk were, like, the jam, but... I don't think they are anymore. So I do think this is a very strong card. But if I was just going to rank the tribes, I think Goblins like beat Merfolk in basically every 60 card format at this point. 1v1, Goblins would destroy Merfolk. Fully agree. Against the meta, I think Merfolk would catch more people. Like, cause, I mean, you, you, you can play around like some Goblin shenanigans. You can't play around it if your lands are islands. I just feel like... <laughs> Um, unless of course you love islands then okay whatever <laughs> I, I have to agree with Seth here I think I think Merfolk's been irrelevant for a long time but at least Goblins oh Goblins oh, has always no, grinded dude. out people in Legacy <laughs> and then we've had Snoop combo right in various formats like it, it, it is a real thing but so I used to play a lot of a lot of Merfolk in Legacy and Modern and my intuition is that this is a win more card that 
Merfolk is really good against like unfair decks, right? Like where you can curse catcher them, you have the spell pierces or whatever, the swan song to stuff them. This just lets you do that some more, right? So if you're already good against those decks, then this is kind of useless. If you're bad against this deck, then your deck is bad in the metagame, don't play it. And it doesn't help against like all the bad matchups, which is like essentially theory, I guess, in 2022, right? Like They'll kill this lord well, and kill everything a with deck. it. Well, you're playing tribal deck. Right? <laughs> so I actually don't think it's that good because you got to sack a merfolk. And what are you going to do? Sack a lord to counter their spell and then like you lose all your power. And like, like I think you just play your spell pierce or force of wills or whatever, right? And, and do the thing. So I actually think it's kind of win more. So it looks strong, but it's already merfolk's strong point. So I actually agree with Seth. I think the goblin is better. And goblins have higher upside than fish. But Although... I will agree with Krim that once we get back to Ixalan a year from now, I think this card could matter in standard. Like, they really supported Merfolk last time. So I would not be surprised if a year from now this was actually a standard playable lord. But as far as modern, I'm I'm in the Richard camp on this one. Like, like if, is there, if there's a Fires of Invention or something in standard, right? Where, like, they play their five drop, you, like, slam this in, you counter it, and then you finish them. Like, I think that that would be pretty sweet for standard. But if people are just playing, like, big green, dirty five drop creature like you're gonna die uh okay i think the the last one soldiers seth your favorite tribe <laughs> valiant <laughs> veteran one and a white two two other soldiers you control get plus one plus one three white white excellent from your graveyard put a plus one plus one counter on each soldier you control what happened okay bad news <laughs> this is the worst of the lords by a long shot if you just go with its abilities it does so much less than everything else the good news is soldiers are the tribe that has the most support in standard. So if you look at these lords just through the context of standard, there's like former folk or something. There's like 10 goblins, just not enough to really build a tribal deck. Soldiers, we got a lot of. You got Sun Gold Sentinel, Thalia, Brutal Cathar, the new King Darian. Like there's a lot of good soldiers that are in the format. So I think that out of all the lords, this one has the best shot at seeing immediate standard play. That said, if you just go by its abilities and its text, it is like a noticeable drop in power compared to the whole rest of the cycle. All the other ones have these like pretty flashy abilities, drawing a bunch of cards and doing all this cool stuff. This one's just like, oh, put a counter on your stuff from the graveyard, which just, it, I don't know. The ability Woo! doesn't excite me, <laughs> but, uh, but I do. I do think soldiers got a shot in standard. Like uh, they're missing the one drop, which I mentioned earlier, but a lot of the good humans are also just accidentally soldiers. So, but there's no payoff for playing. I mean, yeah. Aside from this card, I think it'd be like a token deck. Like uh, there's like this soldiery raise the alarm creature that makes two soldiers for two oh, mana. No. There's like cemetery protector, King Darian. So I think the idea would be to be like a, a go wide tribal aggro deck essentially and this is your one of your anthem effects i don't know if it'll be good uh. but i mean the pieces i put together a couple deck lists like they don't look bad other than the fact that they have zero one drops <laughs> what about a core deck can we build a core deck in standard <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably not no <laughs> i mean sure like uh <laughs> this in 56 planes i, I really hope you're wrong Ooh. seth because if there's a go wide mono white deck then my liliana is gonna be so sad <laughs> So we must we must stop this at all costs. There's there's like no way Liliana goes through two standards being unplayable. Nah, Liliana's about twenty twenty two power I creep crib. I don't know. I, I I will say that again, like we had mentioned, like Lily will be it'll be cool, like because we're gonna see like a lot of these cards don't seem maybe the reason why they don't seem great uh, is because they don't just auto snowball. Like, not every single one of these cards can win on their own. And I feel like I'm actually going to have to, like, use both halves of my, like, decision tree making brain uh, to play. Like, like I'm not going to lie, right? Like, I feel like a lot of Magic cards in the last couple of years has just felt like, you know, face roll mode, right? Like, if I ran my head across the keyboard, I'd win the game. It doesn't matter. So, a lot of Dominaria feels like, wait, Krim, you're going to actually have to think about this. Oh, okay. <laughs> then that's, so that's maybe why... A lot of these cards just feel, yeah. <laughs> is it that well, good? Though? I'm hyped. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, like that it. that is good. It's good. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's just, uh, it's just dialing back the power. 
I think this set's powerful. Like, yeah, maybe there's not as many face roll cards, but that's been one of my biggest complaints about <laughs> Magic recently. Oh, so, so I'm taking that as a win. And I think the cards, like, to me, they still seem powerful. I think your cards can be, like, Baneslayer's still powerful, and it's not a face roll card. I think okay, this okay, has, Seth. has a okay, lot more Baneslayers than it does. <laughs> you just said I lived. Come Raga on now, Seth. You said I lived in 2010. You can't, you can't <laughs> be saying. the most thing I've ever heard, Seth. <laughs> <laughs> you just bring up Baneslayer? <laughs> like, I mean, I'll admit, Baneslayer blocks, like, I guess, the, the dragons. So that's kind of Dragons cool. in this deck are shambles, Baneslayer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, your shipping devastator's in trouble if I get my Bane Slayer out, Grim. Good luck with that. It, it, it's like very true. That actually is true, though. Uh, all right, there's there's one dom- non-Dominaria topic we got to get to real quick because I think it's an interesting question. So uh, there's a question to Mark Rosewater this week about if he had concerns about limited being solved um, because of Arena. And sets being released earlier, and uh, they talked about the person asking the question talked about there being podcasts where, like, a week after set release, the hosts are talking about having done like 50 drafts. So it's just so easy to get in so many games. Plus, just recently, we've seen the proliferation of like limited focus stats sites, like 17 Lands is pretty popular. It's an arena tracking site that focuses on limited and pick orders and all this stuff. So limited has really, really changed as far as the amount of data it has, the amount of games you can play. And Mark Rosewater said that it's a big concern for them, limited being solved. My question to you is, well, first, is it a concern? Second, is there even any fixing to that problem? Like, how do you... <laughs> How do you keep limited from getting solved? Uh, like you can't ban cards or anything, can you? Like you would in constructed formats. Like even if it is a big issue, is there even anything wizards can do about it? So Richard, I know you do uh, quite a bit of drafting sometimes. What do you think about this? Uh, I think wizards is stuck in uh, 1995 still. <laughs> like <laughs> it is the age of the internet and social media. No matter what you do, it will be solved instantly. You know, it's like the MMO developers or whatever, they like make some like crazy MMO and then people are end game like three hours after release and they're like surprise Pikachu. You're like, what do, what do you want? <laughs> there is someone out there playing every minute, you know, that they're awake since the game has been released, if not multiples by multi-boxing or multi-accounting or whatever, like it will get solved. So your game needs to be fun even if the game is solved, right? Like chess is quote-unquote solved or whatever, right? Basketball is solved or any game is solved, right? But it's still fun to play. So I think Wizards should focus on making the game as fun as possible even when it's solved rather than just relying on kind of the newness of it. And if they start banning tracking sites or whatever like they tried to do before, then, you know, you should just give up hope, right? Like they're just going down the wrong track. They should just spend more time making the format fun even if it's solved like people still say like yeah play in a straw draft right it's it's solved but it's fun right it's fine right so yeah i don't i don't buy the solved issue and they can't fix it with the way information spreads nowadays yeah like like at this point if you're upset that information's gonna get out there i, I just like don't think that's like you know a, th- that is not a thing you can do you have to actually adapt and like change that right and much like richard had mentioned it has to be fun and i i don't know i mean i i I did recently play a limited F and M, uh, and so now I'm kind of like a limited expert. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> did you? Did you? But, read a but legit, <laughs> did you? Did you? I, I did not, and I passed a really good card. <laughs> 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 but but I, you know what? It was okay because I I didn't draft green, so you know I I stayed true. And, <laughs> uh, but like legitimately, the limited format being solved. I, I don't know. Yeah, just like make it fun regardless if it's solved. This is one of the places you can see the drawback of Magic being a paper game. Because if it wasn't a paper game, there'd be a lot more more options. Like the rebalancing thing they did for the Alchemy Limited set where blue was underpowered. So they changed a bunch of cards, which hasn't been super well received. So maybe we wouldn't want to go that direction anyway. But you just you can't do that because people are drafting in paper and drafting at Pro Tour. So you really just can't have the format shift on arena or wherever to make it fresh. So I I agree too. There's there's no solving this. So you just got to do what you can. And I think maybe Wizards is like we've talked a little bit about complexity creep cards, having a lot more words, having a lot more uh, abilities. Maybe that's a way that you can keep limited fresh. Like if cards are more complex and can do more 
things, maybe that keeps it relevant for a longer amount of time. But yeah, I don't think there's any way around it. And if they go back to like banning sites and data, oh, I'll be so, so disappointed. Hopefully Wizards has figured out that that's not a good way to handle things. And in their defense, we haven't seen that since arena tracking became a thing. Like before arena, there was definitely a, a big trend towards Wizards shutting down sites that did too much with data in their opinion. But I haven't heard anything about that with arena tracking sites. So hopefully at least that continues. And Wizards is just going to have to find a way to, like Richard said, keep the keep the format fun, even though it's solved. I also wonder, like, how important limited is. Like, every time we hear about limited, like, people don't, you know, there's a hardcore group of people that love limited. I do think it's one of the best formats. But in general, like, it feels like people just play limited to get cards on arena. And, like, they, they view it as a chore and they have to grind limited. And whenever we have limited pro tours and stuff, like, no one cares. So I wonder how important it is and it's always like the scapegoat answer to like why they got to print bad cards or make something <laughs> mythic right like i wonder if they just keep it around for that like do people really care like if they've made a standard set and ignored limited and just focused on like commander and standard or something like i wonder if that would come off better i'm actually curious how important limited is for wizards in 2022 I think it's still like it's horrible for uh like pro tours and stuff as far as the viewer experience like no one really likes watching limited but I think a lot of people enjoy playing limited I think limited has become even more important because of arena almost by default because of how arena is set up and how the economy works where like the hack to actually being able to play constructed is you have to play limited so I think that rightly or wrongly it is pretty important still um but yeah, uh, I don't know if there's really anything they can do about solving the the issue of the format becoming solved too quickly. But I do think it matters. The answer is alchemy. <laughs> you, you rebalance it, right? After a week, you're like, oh, dude's unplayable. Oh. Rebalance. New metagame. It would be... Could you imagine how different Magic would be if the Alchemy launch wasn't so butchered? Like, if people actually liked Alchemy and they launched it in a way that didn't make everyone hate or many people hate the format, like, they'd have so many more options. But now that, like, now you, I don't think you can do that because the immediate pushback would be so huge and the outcry would be so huge. Even if it was a good idea to, like, halfway through a set's lifespan, rebalance it for limited in specific. Even if that was a good idea, there's just, I don't think there's any way they can do it now because that they butchered the alchemy launch so much that no one's going to even like give that idea the time of day. So I think we're going to see the the repercussions of the botched alchemy launch for quite a while now. Even if the format doesn't like succeed or does succeed, like regardless, that's just going to filter down through other decisions. So anyway, uh, where are we at time wise? Do we have enough time? Okay, we, we probably can do like one fish mail, Richard. Give us the, the best fish mail because we didn't get to any last week. All right. If you have questions, send them to at MTGoldfish with the hashtag MGFishmail. We'll get to your questions on air. Uh, Juan Chaka, no slivers in Dominaria. Should I give up hope? Or should I keep my hopes or should I give up hope? What happened to slivers? Ooh. We were like all hyped about slivers. I will admit that it was a weird thing to, like, get the secret layers, the recent ones, and then have, like, slivers be, like, the secret card in all the packs and the, all the secret layers. I feel like that's maybe hinting at something, so I wouldn't give up hope if you like slivers, but maybe that's just only a secret layer thing. We're going to... We're getting Phyrexian yeah. slivers, like infecting warped Phyrexian slivers on new Phyrexia or something. <laughs> I, I I honestly think we could get a sliver or two <laughs> along the way, uh, but but like yeah, I don't I don't know. Like, do do you think we'll see a full blown like sliver deck? So. I mean, we'll get slivers again. I think there will be a sliver set again where we will see, like, a bunch of slivers. I don't know. Last time they were in standard, there wasn't enough to make, like, a super competitive deck, but you could, like, kind of build a fun deck if you like the tribe. I think we'll see that again. And, like... Mark Rosewater gets asked about it a lot as far as uh, the storm scale thing where he ranks how likely mechanics are to come back and slivers are like a three or something, which is we're most likely going to do it again probably many times. So even though Dominator United didn't bring him back, uh, you you'll get your slivers eventually. You just got to be a little patient. But I would be shocked if we never saw a set with slivers as a full supported mechanic again. 
Is Brothers War out? Can we have artifacts livers? <laughs> I feel like we're like moving we... away. Like Brothers War doesn't really make sense. The Phyrexian sets don't really make oh. sense. And then Ixalan and Alderaan don't really make sense. So, so it might be a see slivers way. for years then, right? <sighs> A sliver commander precon or something i don't know maybe a supplemental set but yeah none of the upcoming sets really make a ton of sense to me for slivers being a landing spot but who knows i mean maybe you i don't know there could be an infect sliver or something weird like a one-off but i'd be surprised if any of the sets we know about have slivers as a full mechanic oh, we need we need full-blown slivers we need a new legendary sliver as well so yeah maybe maybe in two years but i'm surprised they they skipped this i thought slivers was a fan favorite and Dominaria didn't really have anything strong going for it really so I thought they could just jam it in right like they don't there's no strong I guess the strongest team is like legendary matters but I felt like they could just jam in slivers here but yeah next uh, time Thir 30 years from now for this 60th anniversary <laughs> <laughs> we it's fine, it's more time for power creep so your slivers will come back even stronger right <laughs> just let them power up uh all right so thank you for all the questions uh send them to at mg goldfish with the hashtag mg fish mail and we'll get to your questions on air and i believe that brings us to the end of episode 396 of the mtg goldfish podcast so richard crimp thanks for hanging out thanks to everyone for listening thanks to card conduit for supporting the show and we will be back next week to talk about our experiences actually playing with dominaria united and whatever else goes on in the world of magic so until then have a lovely week everyone and this is a crew signing out.